Forget writing a book about my life. At this point, I could write an entire book about this one trip. At this point, I'm running on about an eighth of fuel, and I don't have enough fuel to get to Rocky Mountain House where some of the gas stations are open. But along the way, there's this one gas station. According to Google, they're open until 10 or 10.30. So I pulled into there, and it was on a bit of a hill upwards, and it was all ice, and then that's when the truck got stuck again, and I ended up jackknifing for the second time now because the tires weren't gripping on the ice. They just kept spinning and then I was sliding backwards. So I'm pushing on the brake and I thought the entire thing was gonna go off into the ditch and then I would be stuck for sure. So now I'm stuck up the hill. The truck is facing one direction. The trailer is facing the other direction. I can't back up. I can't go forward. And I was actually blocking the exit road. It was the only road in and out of town to some First Nations reservation. So eventually, about 20 minutes later, somebody comes driving down the road with their truck and they can't get past. So he's trying to help me. I grab some pieces of wood at some point and I put them under the tire. But when I hit on the gas, they just went shooting up the back side of the vehicle. I thought one of them might have gone through the windshield of my van, but luckily it didn't. He says, oh, well, I'm going to go get some dirt. He drives this truck away and then somebody else shows up from the other direction. And like, this is the dead of night. You can hardly see anything. I'm just it's nothing but a sheet of ice. There's no people at this gas station. It was closed anyways. Uh, there's some dog or something wandering around. So then this other guy comes back with the dirt. And then at that point, there's like three or four different trucks. And it was like the entire local community came out to help me get unstuck. There's people shoveling dirt underneath my tires. There's people attaching chains to my van, trying to pull it so that it's straight. So finally, I was able to get up the hill just a ways, enough to turn back down the road. And then once again, coming down the hill, I was sliding on ice. I almost ran into this one guy's truck uh, just because the brakes weren't working so finally I got everything straightened out and I was back on the road again but at this point I still have the issue of fuel I asked if any of them had any extra fuel no nope, they, they didn't um, and at this point I'm brainstorming everything I could think of for getting extra fuel I had the van with me that had fuel in it so I thought maybe I can stick a hose down there and suck the fuel out and, and siphon it a little bit at a time into the truck while well, my dad told me that's not an option. Modern vehicles have protection things against that that prevent you from sticking hoses down into the gas tank, specifically to protect against uh, fuel theft. The other option would have been to remove my van yet again from the tow dolly and then drive it down to Rocky Mountain House, grab some fuel there because I had some extra jerry cans with me and bring it back. But then I would be driving for over 100 kilometers with a vehicle that's not insured in the middle of the dead winter on icy roads. So that wasn't a very smart idea either. Uh, the decision was made to pull into the local town of Newegg and wait the entire night for the gas station to open. They had two gas stations. One of them was a shell, and I can't remember. The other one was like just a local generic no-name gas station. Uh, and they weren't going to open until 6 in the morning now. And I was already pretty tired at this point. I had been up all day driving for hours, uh, basically 13, 14 hours at that point. And so I just parked the truck and slept the night. I could have actually fueled up at Shell using the machines outside, but I would have needed a credit card, which I don't have. I could have used my debit card, but that actually fell out of my pocket on East Hastings Street. The Friday that I was downtown to get that money from the outreach center, because I'm running to get there, I'm out of time, they're going to close soon, so my debit card falls out and some homeless person picked it up and went and bought himself a snack. So I, that wasn't even an option for me to use my debit card. So now it's six in the morning on Sunday. It is now the third day of a drive that I typically do in only one. So I've turned a one day drive into a three day drive. So I fuel up as soon as they open. I get myself a bit of breakfast and then I head off. Now I've got four and a half hours to get up to Edmonton. Uh, so I'm heading north and I'm running out of fuel again. So I get into one gas station. And that's when I get jackknifed for the third time. Because, again, I pulled in there, and all of a sudden I start slipping, and the truck is going sideways one direction while the trailer is going 
another direction, and I get jackknifed again, because none of the tires will grip on the uh, road. So I go in, and I talk to the guy in the gas station, and he goes and starts getting out some chains, and he's got this this diesel truck or whatever. And I was like, "Ah, I don't know. It it doesn't look powerful enough to pull it. I mean, this is a fully loaded U-Haul carrying a fully loaded van on a tow dolly. And he was like, this is a diesel truck, dude. I can tow a 30-ton bulldozer with this thing. And (laughs) I didn't know diesel was that powerful. But sure enough, he hooks me on and pulls me in, and I was able to fuel up. And then it was a matter of getting back out on the road. So I start heading north again. Uh, once again, I took a wrong turn. I ended up some down some dirt path that's like really gravel based. And at this point, the truck is going side to side on the road. And everything that happens up front gets multiplied 10 times by the time you get to the back trailer. So the van is going side to side all over the road. It's a good thing there was uh, nobody else on the road because I would have sure, surely caused an accident. I thought at some point the van might just rip right off the tow dolly. And so I ended up on probably a six kilometer seven kilometer stretch of dirt road of ice where i'm just flooring it on the gas because it's barely going up the hill so i'm like this is freaking stupid why don't they put winter tires on the truck this is dangerous so now i've got less than two hours to meet with my friend in edmonton at the time i've scheduled the appointment so there's a very small window of time i'm running out of time so now i go careening down the highway much faster than the limit on the tow dolly is recommended at going i wasn't speeding at that point but i was going well over the recommended limit of driving with the tow dolly on the back and so i get into edmonton and where i was supposed to meet my friend and i pulled into the parking lot one minute before our scheduled time and as i'm pulling in he texts me saying oh i'm here where are you and i was like i'm literally just pulling in so i met with him and then i went in and did a bit of shopping at west edmonton mall first and then i went to go uh back out on the road now heading from edmonton south into red deer and that was when i realized that the strap the toe strap on the dolly Um, The one that had previously come loose and flat out broken, the whole thing is snapped. And so the entire drive, maybe over 100 kilometers, I've been driving with just one tire secured to the dolly. It's a freaking miracle the van didn't come off and, and, and kill someone or something on the highway. That was probably because I was driving a little bit too fast. But it could also be because the trailer is swerving side to side violently on the icy roads. And I was also told that they do come loose while I was driving. So now along the way, every time I stop at the gas station, I go to tighten the straps. Well, the one strap on the left side is always tight. The one strap on the right side is always loose. So it was a problem strap to begin with. And so I phone my parents yet again to give them an update. At this point, every time I call, it's another disaster and their anxiety level just keeps going up and up and up. And they're wondering even if I'm going to get back alive at this point. And I honestly don't even know. And so now I'm spending an hour wrapping rope that I got from the dollar store around the tire and wrapping the chains around the axle under the, the front of the van to try and hold it on and I had maybe one tie down strap that I wrapped around a couple times and I kind of had to jerry rig this ridiculous setup just to keep the van tire on and I really tightened the other strap I ended up having to get on to the number two highway in Alberta heading south now the good thing about that is it's fairly clear it's pretty good weather that week in Alberta so there's not a lot of ice on it the other thing is that it's very straight so because it's straight I'm not having to do a lot of crazy turns or bends where the van would maybe put more pressure or tension on the ropes that would cause it to break so it had to be driving very very slowly too because I didn't want to take the chance that it would break and then that ended up pushing back the time getting into Red Deer even more. So by the time I finally got in there, it was maybe 5 o'clock, and I still had several hours ahead of me for unloading and moving everything and all the furniture individually into the locker unit. I had to do it all by myself because my parents weren't going to be there until later in the evening. And so by the time they show up, it's like 7 or 8. And then I still have a bunch of stuff that I was going to be bringing back with me home. Uh, that wasn't going into storage. So then we're emptying that out into the, the trucks, and my dad had got this tow trailer for me to put the van on, and so we tried getting it up on there, and now it's pitch black at night, and we didn't get out of Red Deer until nearly midnight. It was like after midnight or one by the time I finally got back home. 
And at that point, I was just like, I'm going to sleep for a week. My body just hurt like absolute hell. <laughs> and other than that, that was last Sunday. So now it's been two weeks since then. I've just been resting and, and recuperating at home. Uh, I guess I'll see where things go from here.